Welcome to Reread. We're on book two of the Hand of Thrawn duology by Timothy Zahn. This one is Visions of the Future. There is no Chewbacca. No more. I think at the very beginning, or maybe it's in the last book he's mentioned, is taking care of the kids on Kashyyyk, and he's gone. Now, I don't blame Timothy Zahn for not putting him in here. There is an... It feels like when Han goes out to the Falcon or he has an adventure, Chewie should be there co-piloting. But I get it. Chewie's not the best character to write, and that's probably one of the reasons they killed him off later on. But it's Chewbacca. you got to have the big guns in there, right? I don't know. I don't know. Small complaint, but what would he have done besides just be, you know, extra dialogue for Han to lean on? Uh, Pe Pelion believes the rumor, or he's, he's, he's questioning the rumor that Thrawn's alive. I don't know how. That Later on, they try to explain it like, well, I thought I saw him die. But yeah, you did. You saw him die. You saw the light go out in his eyes and everything. It says that in the, in the, in the book. And I, I, I mean, yeah, he doesn't know his ph physiology, so maybe he survived or, you know, it's always Thrawn. Maybe Thrawn can come back from the dead. And I mean, later on, of course, he comes, he, he kind of puts two and two together and goes, no, this cannot be Thrawn. But even to doubt at the beginning, I thought, eh, is that kind of out of character? I don't know. Gint is in this. I love Gint. I forgot how, it's not a huge role, but he's got a bigger, a recurring appearances in the book. And he's great. He's decoding a message. Oh, he decodes the Imperial Peace Treaty message for Leia. And then goes with them to go to Pelion. Pelion's going, hey, look, we can, you know, we, we need a good slicer, but I can get him into Bastion and... Uh, you know, it's Gint doesn't like to go on an adventure, but he keeps volunteering. And I think the last time he's met, I mean, well, the last time we see things from his perspective, it's kind of funny. There's uh, Star Destroyers pulling up. He's getting scared, but he realizes he's triple code locked the door so that it would take anyone hours to get in. Even he would take 30 minutes to get out. So he has to just go back to work like nothing ever happened. That's really good. Um, the only boring storyline, and I may get some hate for this, is Luke and Mara's storyline. Um, they're with these birds or creatures, you know, sp uh, spirit of wind, whistling rock, one who eats fire. I, I, those aren't their names, but something like that. And they're all talking, and the thing is, it's just boring. And of course, Luke and Mara are slowly falling in love over this. In fact, during something, I can't remember, what something, something happens and they have a connection in the Force as they're fighting off whatever it is. And then Luke goes, did you feel that, Mar? Yes. And he goes, will you marry me? She goes, yes. Okay, I mean, fans were screaming about this, right? They were so excited. I knew it was coming, you know, even when the first time I read the book. But, boy, and I, I usually love Luke's storyline. And this is one that every time it went back to Luke, I was bored. And all the other ones, I was really excited about. I mean, this is still a good book, but Luke and Mar's storyline just keeps on. Because they find out what the Hand of Thrawn is, a tower with five, a uh, mountain with five towers, like a hand reaching for the stars. It's Thrawn's hand. It's all his, these Imperials that he has out in the unknown regions, or uh, no, the Cathal sector out there. And, uh, you know, Luke and Mar kind of unraveling the mystery. They find a clone Thrawn, which is kind of weird, as much as he hated the clone emperor story, he put a clone throne, which doesn't come to any avail because he never wakes up. The whole chamber gets flooded and the clone dies before he's even reborn. But there's a prophecy that Thrawn will come back in 10 years. And I guess they didn't know they had a clone throne in the towers because they think this new throne, the fake throne, is the throne that's come back after 10 years. And Luke and Mar don't even know about the fake throne, which is fine because they've kind of been out of the loop there. But... I don't know. That that was really the only boring story out of the whole point. Oh, and Luke has hot chocolate. Hot chocolate is his favorite drink. I am kind of happy that hot chocolate made it in here again. It seems to be an... I, at this point, it's got to be a gag, right? Timothy Zone has to know the fans hate hot chocolate. But he puts hot chocolate in here, which I got a good laugh at because it's, uh, it's, you know, Luke's favorite. Um, but it's in there too. Now, one big swing and a miss here is that Lobot is here for a good storyline of Lando and Han going to Bastion to get a true copy of the Kamas document or Kamasai document. And Lobot's there and he really doesn't talk or do anything. He's just there as a prop. You guys remember Lobot. Well, Lobot's with him and uh, Lobot's going to tap into the system and Lobot's going to do this. But I was really hoping, especially, and I, I don't expect every author, I don't think every author read every book. Uh, there's, a, there's a chance that Kevin Jansen read all the Bantam novels but and then I th I do think John Whitman read everything, but other than that, authors weren't aren't expected to read other uh, people's books. 
But if Timothy Zahn would have glanced at Michael P. Q. McDowell, he, there's so much humor that could have been there. As Lobot's you know, declining Lando to help him out, you know, because after what happened last time, none of that's even mentioned. Not that it has to be mentioned, but the whole time you're like, oh, Lobot and Lando are back again. But nothing, nothing is done with it. So that was that was kind of a strike for me. What's going on with uh, the minstrel Shada? Well, she is really caring about her job being a bodyguard to Talon Car. She's at first she was like, oh, smugglers, and now she's like, I will die for him or whatnot. So I mean, obviously she's coming over to his side. She'll join his group at the end because uh, Card is gonna make a deal to get rid of her. She has a death warrant out. Like the uh, minstrel assassins are going after her, and. Um, uh, the card talks the, I don't know, one of the high council members out of it and in exchange has her working for him, which she's happy to do. I mean, it's fine. I, I don't mind that. And I don't mind Shot either. I think she's a pretty good character. Um, but speaking of card, he's looking for his old boss, a boss, Cardis. Uh, he took over the operations from Cardis. Cardis was a ruthless man. He got kidnapped by a dark Jedi years ago and he was never the same. Then one day he just up and left. And before infighting could start on who gets control, Card quickly took control of the operation. And he thinks Cardis hates him for that and has been wanting to, has been plotting revenge for oh so many years. But it turns out when they see Cardis, and I remember this scene clearly, he's a weak, befuddled old man who is using Card as bait to take to entice an enemy to come and attack him so they can wipe him out, and then Card puts two and two together and finds out that Cardus is sane, you know, sane in the head. He wasn't old and feeble at all. He was faking. I don't understand why. They explain it, but it doesn't make sense. So that was kind of weird. I, I you know, the first time I'd, I, it'd been a while since I read it, I thought, well, they'll make, they'll make sense of this yet. And even after reading, I was like, that really doesn't make sense why I did that. But oh well. Um, Mara gets to explain what Lando is. She went, oh well, uh, we pose as a married couple. And when Han called us, I thought that was a call from our contact. So when I was wearing his clothes and we were acting like we were just getting dressed because we'd gotten out of bed together, that was for show for whatever, Mar, you liar, you liar, you cheat. You really did it with Lando. It's okay because Luke had girls too. Lando can't have, a, I mean, Mara can't have a boyfriend. Mara and Lando did it. Put a, put a hashtag on that. Oh, and speaking of Mara and Luke, um, when they talk about themselves, they say, it's going to be us two. Yes. And they go forever, forever. And I was like, well, at least for like, you know, 14 years or so. I don't, it's not going to last that long, but that's okay. That's okay. Cause we didn't know back then. Right. Um, Peleon exposes the fake throne and reveals, uh, Tears, Major Tears is actually a clone. It's a really great scene. I love it. Paleon scenes are just, I mean, he could just make the whole book about Paleon and from his point of view, and it'd be gold. In fact, the, the book overall is really good. I know I've made a few complaints, but the book overall is really good because Paleon scenes and that last scene was just so good. It's, it's just fantastic. Um, Luke and Mara are sipping hot chocolate again uh, and, and on the way back home, and Mara's talking about how maybe she, maybe she and Luke can just travel from place to place and start teaching advanced students. Whoa, 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 Mar! You you claim to Luke in book one that you don't have much of the force. Like she can't he understand the little bird creatures, like Luke can, um, and she's not attuned to the force. So all of a sudden, she's going to be training advanced people because she's married to Luke. How is she going to get extra force in her when? Um, I um, avoid that joke. Anyway, Mar is revealed at the end to have a true copy of the Comacy uh, documents to find out who the Bothans were who were responsible, and they never reveal that. Like They just kind of drop the whole story. I mean, it's like, well, wasn't that the question we were trying to ask the whole time? Not that it has to be like Borsfila's, you know, clan, but you just kind of dropped it. Like, it's not important because it's the end. I don't know. Um, so, the Hand of Thrones duology is not without its flaws, but overall, it is a solid duology. It is. It is. It's really good. There's a lot of good scenes in there. Mar and Lando really did it. Just want you to know that. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to read the next one. See you later.